What is up? Sexy people, it is Dave. It's Duncan. Back. Sex might be a word that's overused in this. I shouldn't this, have, I shouldn't have went with sex. People, like, I? Sensual people. Sensual. <laughs> <laughs> sensual <There we> go. <laughs> I'm glad that's not one of the restrictive words that people are having to cut out of their YouTube videos right now is sex because yeah. we'd be fucked on this review. That's Literally. Totally Fuck is though. So hi, bye. Um <laughs> What are you doing with your camera? Just, I don't want to see your tits, right? I'm just going to focus camera. Now. Eyes um, up here, Dave. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so we are back to chat about the brand new album from French Sludge Monsters Love Sex Machine. Bonjour. <laughs> Come and tell you. The band's new album, True, will be released on April 12th. I will just talk right through Duncan. <laughs> yeah. I'll give him no air, no room to speak. Pelagic record. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, um, if patience is a virtue, love sex machine might as well be saints. Ooh. Albeit saints with a taste for the filthiest sludge metal riffs offset by down-tempo post-metal grooves and a fiendish sense of lyrical humour. The Lille-based band's sophomore album, Asexual Anger, oh, <laughs> was an overwhelming experience in every sense of the word. Yes, it was. Yes, yeah, it was. Dave just had an orgasm. <laughs> you can't see it right now, but... He's changing his pants at the next review. Clean up on aisle five. <laughs> Now, with another eight surreal years of life behind them, Love Sex Machine are finally ready to unleash True, ten long-awaited tracks of revitalised righteous indignation, wry social commentary, and, of course, unspeakably disgusting heaviness. Yes. Yes, that's true. Uh, yeah. It's true with a B. True. Um, all this, however... <laughs> It's not to say that Love Sex Machine don't take their craft seriously. From the outset, True is a testament to the band's decade of experience as idiosyncratic stalwarts of the European sludge scene. If asexual anger was an ordeal, True is a new kind of nightmare. Uh, collaboratively recorded by the band themselves and beloved producer Sandford Parker, True is a record defined by fatherhood as the world teeters on the brink of collapse, an unashamedly monstrous offering. Whilst the riffs and refrains are steadfast, resolute and relentless, the lyrics for the album were written collectively by the band, constantly tweaked, amended and reinterpreted in order to capture the culminative, culminative, yes, culminative yeah, chaos. Culminative, yeah. Of the intervening years. I said it and I thought, that doesn't sound right, but then <laughs> I was like, no, that was right. Um, true is Love Sex Machine springing a trap eight years in the making. One that trap in the form of the word culminative. <laughs> one that Watch him stumble. We'll go on. We've got one, guys. <laughs> one that'll keep us strung up between a rock and a hard place so we can at least appreciate the view of the oncoming apocalypse. So, Remember when bands used to say, you know, we like this album encapsulates a dangerous world, and we'd be like, that. Oh, is the world that dangerous? And now in my forties, like every band that says that, I'm like, yes, the world is dangerous. Yeah, thank fuck, someone singing about it. On the brink of collapse, Duncan. On the fucking brink, the ice rink brink. Um, nice, Stan Dave. Stan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, what yeah. sex machine? You Love sex machine um, seem more familiar with their oeuvre than I am, and I can only assume that's because Big French Davy is struck uh, again. A wrench. Well, is I mean, that a baguette in your pocket, <laughs> or are you just hungry, Dave? <laughs> hungry for French metal, Duncan. <laughs> See, and, like you are like fully familiar. I oh, like yeah. literally the only track I had heard was the track we played on the podcast oh so. oh no yeah when well, i was fully it was a in. new experience for me so much so that when you were reading that press statement don't read the press statement you were like that oh they've been away for 10 years and i was like have they <laughs> all right oh. like so they did stuff before cool um yeah right 
Fill me um, in in a non-sexual way. Big fan. <laughs> Big fan of the band. Big fan of Pelagic Records as well. Um, we Pelagic just now are just oh, it's like it's almost a, like a guaranteed stamp that even if the music isn't the most ground baking, the production is going to be fucking chef. Chef's kiss huge. <laughs> like every album that's come out on that label so far, like the production is like it's the bit that I want to talk about first mm. over the music, which feels unfair. Mm. Um, yeah, I I've been waiting on this one for a while. Um, I was a huge fan of Asexual Anger, which came out in 2016, and then they reissued it uh, last year, 2023, um, just just to get me all moist, Duncan. That's the only reason they did that. <laughs> did, 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 they, uh, did they release it with the caveat that they were working on new material? Yeah. Right. So you like this? This is when you were like that. I've been waiting a long time. It was like evidently fucking almost ten years. <laughs> but like from your position, it was you were anticipating that because of the campaign around the re-release. Yes. Um, well, just a re-release, or was it remastered, or just like a straight up? I think it was just a reissue. Yeah, just cool. Just reissued. Um, Don't fuck with it. No, didn't need it. Um, no. As much as I was looking forward to this, it was always going to be. It's always going to be a big mountain to climb, Duncan. I mean, ain't no mountain high enough <laughs> when you're a French man signed to Pelagic, Dave. Well, to better <laughs> asexual anger. I need to check this out. Like, this fucking oh. holding card so close to you. I should read the press statement. Always read the press <laughs> statement. Um, I, I've played that album to death. Like, I right. love that album. Um, it, is, it is just like an eruption of bleak sludge riffs just spewing from the rustiest old pipe you can imagine um it is just yeah it's just art film you write um, lyrics and album titles for limp biscuit <laughs> from the rustiest old pipe um it, it also it also had um a slightly that album's got a slightly progressive side to it at times um, oh, right. yeah, yeah. um so like there's a track on it called drone syndrome um which is like Imagine like Meshuggah dipped in the blackest of tar, basically, and that's what that track sounds like. Um, this album, this album, is is just as grimy and mm. and dragged through the mud. Um, it sounds just as bleak. Um, it's it's still sludge and post metal, but um, but injected with. A, a real feeling of, of misery on this one um but what i loved about this was you can hear you can hear the tweaks that they've made um it's, it's very apparent from the first track on this album that they have trimmed much more of the of any excess fat on this album um the, the tracks on true are are firstly a touch shorter than the tracks on Asexual Anger. So the longest track on here is like four minutes, 25. Um, a lot of the stuff on Asexual Anger was between five and six minutes long. Ah, right. That progressive element, do you think, was pushing um, them out that way or just that things had a tendency to run a bit longer? Possibly, um, possibly. Um, I think um, I think this kind of leaner version of Love Sex Machine makes the songs even more punishing to oh, they be honest. pop yeah like they totally um, pop yeah. there is like if you if you listen to this album front to back there is no needless build-ups there is no atmospheric intros or atmospheric outros or a riff that will just you know let play out for a bit you know overstay its welcome it is stripped back to what makes what makes these tracks the most impactful they can be um and they sound fucking huge on this album mm -hmm. um now although there's there's literally there's no beating around the bush on this um <laughs> it's hard to say anything without it now sounding sexual i, know, I, know. I mean <laughs> we're ruined um yeah um but it doesn't mean they've stopped evolving as a band um in fact kind of quite the opposite um these tracks are are infused with with a lot of clever ideas and elements that make this um a bit of a different listen to its to the the, the predecessor um yes it's still crushingly heavy and the the groove laden sludge and post metal side of the band hasn't reduced at all um it's actually heavier um and more <laughs> hypnotic than before um but each track on the album gives you a little 
a kind of little additional dimension to appreciate um, whether that's something um, heavily blackened um, mm. in the riffs, which you'll you'll hear on the, the track called Canopy, um, where they go further into that kind of realm of things, or even in the vocals, which are just utterly scathing. Um, Test 26, for example, is uh, kind of monstrously groovy, very dissonant in its sound, but the vocals are utterly scathing, like reaching into basically what is black metal um, with a yeah. kind of like sludgy texture to it at the same time. Um, it's it's such a a nihilistic sounding release. Um, even even when they bring in like a, a bit of lead work or like a bit of there's like a bit of synths in the back and. Um, mm -hmm. to kind of like reinforce a section it still sounds incredibly ominous very bleak sounding there's there's no there's no real moment of light on on this album um they they stick with a very desolate sound and never really veering from it much at all but they, they still do a really good job of keeping you interested throughout the album um and there are so many really great moments on this album real standout tracks on here um i loved the groove on uh, body probe um uh, body probe has there's a point in that track where it's like the like like acquire another guitarist <laughs> <laughs> like can i clone myself to play exactly yes can i clone myself a couple of times yes <laughs> well, let's do that then uh, yeah there's 100%. a bit where that the, that guitar like riff gets so fucking huge sounding mm. <laughs> like like that. It's yeah. like one day it's playing that way and it sounds like seven people are playing it. It's fucking huge. Yeah, absolutely. When I, when I was listening to that that track, I was like, <clears throat> if, you, if you like bands like LLNN, then mm -hmm. this will be right up your street because there's a lot of similarities between um, this album and Unmaker by LLNN. What, you know, it's just mm -hmm. the size and the, the kind of thickness of the, the sound is unbelievable. Um, and like that band as well, Love Sex Machine, they they don't overcomplicate things. They don't like they, they use they use repetitive motifs and ideas, um, but they still build on them as the the tracks go on. So it, it always kind of leads to something just apocalyptic sounding. Um, but there's something really really absorbing um, about mm -hmm. kind of large portions of this album where you find yourself kind of just being dragged in and kind of immersed in it, um, and then. All of a sudden, they'll they'll kind of break out with a track like like Hollywood Story, for example, which breaks the pattern and, and gives you like all these like various tempos and a bit more kind of dynamics in the vocals. So even though like I, I was engrossed in it, um, they kept it varied and interesting enough that it never felt like they were just kind of repeating the same idea over and over. Um, like every Love Sex Machine production, they they seem to get better and better on every release. Um, Asexual Anger was, it, it felt like more, slightly more cleaned up from the first album, the, the, the self-titled um, first album. And this one for me, I think is their, their best production to date. Um, mm. I think it's the best representation of the band that they've captured um, on record. It's it's a very natural sounding album. The, the tones of the guitars and the drums are, are very organic. And, and nothing here sticks out for the wrong reasons. Uh, it's very much an album where the, the instrument, instrumentation sounds uh, kind of intrinsically connected. Um, there are cert certain albums that you hear when you can you, can, you listen it and you think, all right, you can hear the drums are maybe recorded separately in a, a different yes. country yeah, or yeah. a different studio, yeah, yeah. you know, from the rest of the album. Um, this doesn't sound like that at all. Um, it feels like they've taken the time to make sure this album sounds as um cohesive and as naturally kind of blended as possible um it's, it's a really really good production on the album um yeah i i love this i think it's a fantastic release from love sex machine um it's been a bit of a wait since asexual anger but this was definitely worth it um what were, your, what were yourself what are you thinking about um true true with a v by the way true with a v with a v that's how you know not english um <laughs> Unless it's ye old timey. So yeah, like th th this like carried a lot of weight with me straight away right from the album artwork, mm. which has this kind of cosmic Lovecraftian scene yeah. played out of tangled tentacles and like otherworldly old god entities in the background manipulating your central man in the middle. Yeah. Loved it. Like I was like as soon as I saw it I was like that, I would have that 
not only in a fucking t-shirt i would have that framed on my wall tattooed I, love, I will have it tattooed on me all those dots are going to be an absolute rc but let's do it do it uh well there's like a hundred colors in this that's right <laughs> that's fucking right strap in tattoo artist true we're about to make you open every fucking satchel of fucking <laughs> ink you've got, bitch. Um, so, yeah, this is a new experience for me with this band. So mm. I'd heard, was it Fucking Snakes, I think, was the track we played on mm. the, the podcast. So um, I hadn't heard it during the recording. For those that are long-time listeners, they'll know that during the recording of the podcast, Dave just sends me tracks afterwards. It gives me the, like, all the blurb, but I don't get to hear them. So that's why when we come back in, I'm never like, that's a tasty tune, Dave, because I haven't heard it. But I I edit the podcast, so I get a chance to listen to the tracks. Then I dug it, dug it quite a bit. There was uh, there was something in the back of my head, though, a band that I wanted to mention, mm. but I did mention before we started recording that if I mention it, I may mention it too much, and I don't want to mention it too much mm. because I have an affinity and love for this band. But I'm going to mention it once. And then after that, I will refer to it as the aforementioned band I mentioned before. It <laughs> feels longer and more complicated. Yep. Stick with me, guys. Stick <laughs> with me. Um, there is a bit of the Will Haven in here. Now, not like modern, modern Will Haven, which is like much more fucking desperate and narrowed and fucking heavier, mm. uh, more detuned. But like kind of mid 2000s Will Haven. Mm. Uh, maybe right just before Carpe Diem, but certainly through Carpe Diem, where they were starting to find the atmosphere yeah. through this, and it's it's in the it's in the way they approach those slab like riffs mm. that hit you. It's just like it's relentless and punishing. Yeah. There's also, um, and you mentioned LLNN, who I liken to the aforementioned band that I won't keep mentioning. Um, their sound as well utilise that technique as well on a slower scale but they are more influenced by kind of latter day versions mm. of the American band that we're not mentioning and that they build they build atmosphere through those sounds I'm not giving you another term <laughs> um, what about WH <laughs> uh, like like this, as it slabs of, uh, it slabs in layers of tones and some of those tones aren't as heavy as the other, but when they're put together, they form a structure that is impenetrable. Mm. And a lot of this album is impenetrable. Like, when it hits you with something as simple as drums, bass, guitar, synths and vocals, there is not an iota of light coming through it. It's mm. just this fucking huge, solid structure that is at you. And um, What I loved about it was that... You mentioned there's maybe not, like, sections that go off the kind of off the reservation or really try and like turn things out but it's all very interesting because of the layering mm. like now that layering could be done with synths in the background or a different like kind of lead level of guitar work um, or the bass is just playing something slightly different than what was doing before it's actually mostly driven from the vocals which is kind of cool mm. uh, the vocal dexterity here goes from everything from kind of gnarly spoken word the kind of skied and screams of black metal stuff. There's, I think it's on um, Canopy, there's like almost this death metal grill that sits underneath the main vocal line um, about the uh, about the interlude part. And when I heard that the first time, I was like, holy fuck, that's deep. Mm. Just like I just found a different register. Mm. And they don't overuse it at all. And they're actually very playful with the way the, the vocals are executed on the album. And I love that about it. It's, it's almost like, like the music can keep that tone and keep that groove for as long as it wants and the mm. changeable element is the vocals as opposed to a lot of bands in this genre which will change things up by either changing up the the tempo, uh, time signature or the sims on the guitar. They don't do that here. If anything, they use that vocals as a kind of focal point to, to, to almost um, lead you through the lesson. It's very, very, very well done. Uh, we mentioned before, like, oh, uh, body probe was to me where I was like, "That holy fuck, right? We're like, we're get, we're getting something kind of fucking awesome." Because I got through fucking snakes, which was amazing. Uh, it's fucking amazing. Uh, Test twenty six, which I really enjoyed, and Trap for Life, which I really enjoyed. And I was like, "Yeah, I've, I'd like, I understand the groove of this band. I'm on their wavelength. This is stuff I love." So they're not really having to sell things for me. And then body probe kicked in, and. 
for the most part, I was just like, I'm really fucking digging this. And they just found a level of heaviness, which was not them dropping anything. Mm. It was just them layering up more, like, heavy guitars. I was like, yeah, they've got that as well. They're not falling into traps or pitfalls. They understand that. Actually, the execution of how they do things. When I saw WH Live last year, <laughs> um, I told you that they played the second song from their new album, which... When you listen to that track, is like there's a drop in it which just feels inexplicable. Like it, it goes from playing a kind of higher, heavier riff to this fucking bendy groove riff, which just like it, it blew my mind on on MP3. And I was like, I wonder how that's going to be live. It was more fucking savage live. There was no fuckery. He just mm. pressed a button and then hit me with a riff that like almost folded me into a suitcase. <laughs> um, it was that heavy. This album is full of that, like sections where you kind of feel like, right, that's really cool and that's really heavy, and then not because they're detuning things or are or, or like like bending strings or anything like that. They just hit you with the next riff, which is a variation on what you had before, but it's ju- it just sounds heavier. Mm. And that's in the production, which is fucking incredible on this one. Like I'm, I'm telling you right now, Pelagic. When it comes to like overall seals of quality mm. it's there for me like as a, as a record label I've yet to hear an album that they've put out that I've not thought this sounds fucking massive mm. like see if you told me tomorrow Love Sex Machine were going on tour and they were playing to two and a half thousand people I'd be like that is that all? <laughs> like <laughs> surely they should be playing to bigger cr- like it just sounds it sounds fucking huge um, and that aids their their overall like vibe that they've got going. That mm. kind of wall of impenetrable sound, and and that that just sense of desperation. Like every track just feels like despair manifest. Mm. It flows really really well. This is not long. It's not. Uh, I want to say that the LL. NN album was longer than this. I actually want to say that maybe the Will Haven album was longer than this as well. Um, this one clocks in, what, 34, 35 minutes-ish? Mm. Which is the perfect length. Like, this finishes and I'm like, whew, right, we're just going to just take a wee breather. <laughs> Make sure the family's all right and uh, come back to this later. It is it's a very, very engrossing, absorbing, like, yeah encapsulate an experience and just like you feel it's like watching like a car crash in real life where you kind of feel like you shouldn't be watching mm. what's happening but you like can't take your eyes off it the whole album just has you locked in from start to finish uh, yeah I'd never heard of them before um, I was going to say it sounded like a remarkable debut but it turns out there's a bit of a pedigree there <laughs> but I would say it's harder to come back from a as, as a harder job to come back from an eight-year hiatus and release an album like this, mm. than it is to say that this is our this is our magnum opus, our opening our opening pitch mm. on our first album. So to me, that uh, is even more impressive. Mm. I'm, I'm looking forward to going back and checking the back catalogue. But yeah, this is all the bands we've mentioned in comparison are bands I fucking love that score really high with me. So the fact that they just sound like a French version of that just Tickle my tits to Tuesday, Dave. That's what I say. <laughs> right through to Tuesday. Right through. Right through. Don't stop. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, <laughs> final thing. Uh, scores for True by Love Sex Machine. We have held off on singing Spandau Ballet so many times. <laughs> it's getting painful now. Like a heavy edging session. I don't know why I'm talking so much about sex. There is yeah. no sex on this album. No. It's a misnomer. <laughs> no. This is it's not a not an album <laughs> has a lot of sex on it or And like if you're looking for the soundtrack to hate fuck, um, <laughs> true is that one. Like, I am not gonna forgive you, but we need to get this out of our system. Have you heard this band? <laughs> Patrick Bateman. Kinda <laughs> I can love Sex Machine album comes up. Um, so scoring. Um, oh, oh, Dave, I can see the quandary that you put I yourself am, in. I am torn, Duncan. Um, you are Natalie and <laughs> I Can see it in your eyes. Is, is I'm all out of faith. <laughs> I've been I've been running this question through my mind all day, Duncan. 
is this better than asexual anger? See, I don't have that quandary. Yeah, I know. Right? So, I know. so like, like, just to give the listeners a, a, a peek behind the curtain, hmm. are we saying that your 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 man's previous album is five? Um, or is that a four point five? I would have or said is that four. Asexual anger was probably a four point five for me. Four point five. So this is a quandary you're in. If it's better, then you need to give it another five, Dave. <laughs> I kind of. I kind of love the stripped back, more compact version of Love Sex Machine. Um, oh, you're gonna do it. I can see it in your eyes. Yep, clean up on aisle five. <laughs> it's a five. Self the boom, boom. Where's the graphic? How come I can't see it? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. There's anything that would change about this, to be honest. Um, and I do, I, as, as a heavier, more concise version of the previous album, they've added in newer elements. Um, they haven't just like been like, oh, we'll just stick out another album that sounds the same. They've they've changed things up, um, and it's absolutely punishing. And that production is fucking ridiculous. It's so good, man. So good. Uh, okay, and what about yourself? What are you thinking? Oh, I'm, I can't join you on the five. I am a ball tickle away from it, Dave. Um, I'm coming in at a four point five. Four point five. I, I think it's fucking excellent. I mm. really, I really, 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 really do. Um, I don't even know what I'm marking it down for, but my every listen that I've got to the end, I'm like that. This is the epitome of a four point five for me. Mm. Practically perfect in every way, just like Mary Poppins. <laughs> uh, Love, Sex Machine, and True is out on April twelfth on Pelagic Records. Um, links below to the band and to the uh, pre-order check it out have a little listen see what you make of this one um, that is the review thank you for checking out we'll be back with another review very soon but until then take care speak to you soon bye everyone <laughs>